Um, hello all. Uh, so those of you who remember, I used to have a, a another YouTube channel, and uh, on that channel, I uh, occasionally would sort of po do videos showing what sort of physical media I'd bought, uh, you know, recently. And uh, uh, that channel no longer exists, so those videos no longer exist. But uh, uh, recently, I had the urge to sort of start making them again, so. I thought I'd uh, not show everything I've bought since then, because that was a good year or two ago, so I've bought a lot of stuff, but uh, uh, basically show some of the things I've bought over the past couple of months. Uh, there's quite a few, so um, uh, I'll start with a film that was a sort of a childhood uh, classic for me. We have uh, a Disney Pixar's uh, A Bug's Life. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, this hasn't really held up very well. For, I used to love it when I was a kid, and I would I had it on VHS, and I would watch it over and over again. But it hasn't held up that well for me. It's it's still pretty entertaining, but now I find the character, uh, most of the characters in the story, quite forgettable. I mean, the circus bugs and uh, what's his name, the the bad guy uh, Hopper. Uh, you know, they're quite memorable, but uh, most of the other characters are a bit, you know, bland, really. Um, yeah. But, you know, so it is uh, enjoyable. It does have some uh, good, uh, funny gags and uh, such, and uh, animation for the time looks very good. It's a bit dated now, but uh, yeah, for, for 1998, it's it's pretty pretty stunning. Is the disc and uh, Disney movie rewards. Uh, if anyone wants to use those, I don't. I don't know if they're out of date or anything, but if you, you know, if you want to use them, I don't use stuff like that. Uh, so, special features wise, you have bonus commentary, but you've got commentary by uh, John Lasseter, Andrew Stanton, and Lee Unkirch. I guess that's how you say that. Uh, deleted scenes and outtakes, behind the scenes, a Bugs Life production feature uh, documentary, over thirty minutes of all new Blu-ray content, including a filmmakers roundtable. Plus much, much more. So you do get quite a lot of special features. So yeah, I uh, was a bit disappointed re-watching this as an adult, but uh, I still sort of enjoyed it. So, And uh, because I, I bought A Bug's Life, I thought I should also pick up the other ant-related film from 1998. We have uh, Ants. Now this one I thought held up much, much better. I've always, I always really liked this one too, but I think I, I like this one a lot more. It's got a much stronger script and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, absolutely hilarious, really. Um, uh, uh, it's got Woody Allen in it, who I'm a big fan of. So, it, And this is kind of basically one of his uh, his sort of comedy films, but sort of aimed at kids. So, uh, yeah, that's that's why I really like this. So, uh, got this on DVD. The, you can get it on Blu-ray. It's not available on Blu-ray here in England, but you can get it overseas. But... Uh, I decided just to get the DVD because it was like a couple of quid. And see, most of the things I bought in this, most of the DVDs I bought in this update are things you can get on Blu-ray either here or if you can't get them here, you can get them overseas. But I bought, I found the DVDs for really cheap, and I just went for those, and you know, for now and that, which I probably should stop doing because uh, I've got 4K TV now, and uh, most of my DVDs look pretty awful on it. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll probably upgrade them. Uh, at some point, if you know, uh, I get the chance, but uh, yeah, I just got the DVD for now. Um, yes, yeah, so bonus features you have uh, audio commentary, uh, behind the scenes featurette, basics of uh, character animation, facial animation, character design, and the trailer. Not as not as many special features as a bug's life, but some decent stuff. One thing though, um, it says that the audio is 5.1. Um, the English audio, it's not. Like, I watched it on, like, when I got it, and uh, it was just standard stereo. So if you've got a 5.1 system, I would recommend avoiding this disc because it's not 5.1, even though it says it is. So probably a reason to import the Blu-ray instead or watch it on streaming or something. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some reason the disc doesn't have the uh, ratings, like the PG certificate on it. I'm not sure if that's allowed or not. Uh, it's a bit weird. But yeah, uh, very good film. Kind of been forgotten. Now it's sort of remembered is the, the film that ripped off A Bug's Life, which I don't think it deserves. I think it's a much better film than A Bug's Life. Much better written, much funnier, much, uh, you know, 
more memorable film. Although the animation does look a bit does look much more dated. I think it's a better film overall. So yeah, if you sort of if you haven't seen this, I would give it a go. Unless you don't like Woody Allen, in which case you probably won't like this. But if you do like him, give this a go. So yeah. <clears throat> Next we have another Blu-ray. Um of uh, uh, Jimmy Cliff in The Harder They Come, which is a, I think it's a crime movie from, like, Jamaica. It's a Jamaican crime movie. It's considered to be one of the great uh, Jamaican, uh, like, one of the best, the greatest reggae film of all time, apparently. Uh, And it's actually, the soundtrack to the, the soundtrack element of this film is actually what introduced uh, reggae music to people outside of Jamaica, because the soundtrack to this was huge in the 70s and got a lot of people into reggae uh i've not seen it uh but i've heard it's like i said i've heard it's very good i was kicking myself slightly because uh, i do like they have the the um original artwork on the inside there there's the disc i was kicking myself because uh after i'd ordered it i found out that there's a few uh issues with the the, the um there's a f- you know the, the transfer isn't the best and uh, there's an American Blu-ray from, I think, Shout Factory, which has a better transfer, and I was kicking myself, and more extras, and I was kicking myself uh, <laughs> for not, n- you know, uh, for, for um, not getting that instead. But uh, never mind. I, I'm sure, I'm sure this will be uh, still be watchable. Um, so bonus features, Hard Road to Travel, which is a making of documentary, one and all, The Phenomenon of the Harder They Come featurette, Interviews with Jimmy Cliff, Arthur Gorson, sorry, uh, the uh, film and record producer, David McDonald, the director of photography, Yvonne Brewster, the line producer, conversation with Perry Hensel, the director, and uh, No Place Like Home trailer. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, watching this. This actually, the song, uh, what's it called? Uh, You Can Get It If You Really Want It is actually from this. By Jimmy Cliff, so yeah, uh, looking forward to watching this. And uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, uh, even if I don't like the film, I'm sure I'll enjoy the soundtrack very much because there's a lot of uh, kind of <laughs> very very good reggae songs on there. Next, we have another DVD, another film I haven't seen. Uh, we have Kingpin uh, from the directors of uh, the Something About Mary. Yeah, not seen this. Heard it's very funny though, so. Yeah, and it was on eBay for like a couple of quid. So I thought, yeah, I'll give that a go. Uh, it's it's like a parody of uh, The Colour of Money, but with uh, bowling instead of uh, pool, I guess. So, yeah, not much to say. It's got a trailer and a making of. I think the making of is like one of those ones that's only like a couple of minutes long. So not really much of an extra feature. Yeah. Uh, so the disc and the little leaflet. So, yeah, again, haven't seen this. Looking forward to it, though. Apparently, it's uh, very, very good. Next, we have a film I have seen, again, uh, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors uh, with Peter Cushing. I was slightly annoyed when I ordered this because I thought um, I thought the DVD had uh, special features, but evidently this is a reissue without, like, a bare-bones reissue. Like, I guess it's like a budget version. Which kind of annoyed me because I wanted to like watch the listen to the audio commentary, but never mind, never mind. <laughs> uh, at least at least it's got the film. That's that's what's important. Um, just got a very weird main menu where the only option is play movie, like there's no chapter selection or anything. So you just play movie. Which, if that's the case, you wonder why they even bothered making a menu if it's, that's the only option. But yeah, anyway, uh, sort of it's a amicus film, and it's an horror anthology. Basically, sort of five. I think it's five um, little vignettes. Uh, basically, it's about five guys on a train, and they meet uh, Peter Cushing, who's like this uh, doctor. He's got he's got these tarot cards, and um, he's basically sort of reading them their future in this, these segments. It's it's not the best Amicus anthology film, not my favorite, but it is it is you know quite enjoyable. It's got uh, you know. Any film with uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee in it is worth watching, I think. So, yeah. Give that a watch if you like uh, sort of horror films on like the 60s, 70s period. And then another Amicus film I actually got this. Like, this, the eBay seller was selling this and Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Uh, both were still like sealed to the brand new copies. Um, the Beast Must Die. 
this isn't an anthology film. It's just it's a werewolf film. Uh, I have seen this. I don't remember it being very good, but I wanted Dr. Terror's House of Horrors and it was a good deal to get the two of them. So I'll, I'll give this a rewatch. Um, yeah, I don't remember it being very good. Basically, it's uh, this guy, um, Tom Lockhart. No, no, Tom, uh, what's the actor called? Calvin Lockhart's character, Tom. Uh, he invites like a group of people, include, which includes Peter Cushing, to like his house. He basically tells them one of them's a werewolf and... Uh, you know, he's he's basically you know in a sort of a mystery of which one's the werewolf, and uh, yeah, it's pretty naff. But uh, you know, even the bad sort of films, horror films in this period, kind of have some uh, enjoyability factor to them. Again, no extra features, but uh, you know, and uh, the menu only says uh, play movie, but uh, yeah, I do quite like the. It's a. It, uh, it's actually kind of a spoiler because they're showing. Uh, who, uh, one of the characters um, when they get killed. So, uh, yeah, not, not, not. You know, yeah, thanks, for, thanks for spoiling it, uh, Anchor, well, <laughs> Anchor Bay. But uh, yeah, so uh, not a great film, but probably worth it if you like. Again, if you like that sort of period of horror films, those are both on Blu-ray, and the Blu-rays have quite a lot of really nice special features. So get those instead. Uh, don't be a cheapskate like me. And next we have a TV series. This is on... I don't think this is on Blu-ray because it's like uh, done... It was done on uh, standard def video, but it's a documentary series, uh, Cosmos, with uh, Carl Sagan. Uh, from, I think, 1980. So, like, uh, basically it's a science TV series that Carl Sagan hosted and wrote. And, uh, yeah, it, you might think... Uh, it's probably pointless watching a science documentary from like 40 years ago because some of the information will be outdated. And it, it, there are some outdated... Some of the information is a bit outdated, but uh, I think it's still worth watching because he's a very engaging host. So, yeah. it's And the music by, uh, I think, Vangelis is, is fantastic. So it's... Uh, we have... Uh, the, uh, just, the only special features is some of the episodes have uh, science updates like that they did years later. They have a little Col Sagan, like about 10 years after the, it aired, the, when they released it on VHS, Col Sagan filmed little science updates, and uh, some of the episodes have those. So, yeah. It's got five discs. They, ha they all have uh, three episodes on them, except for the last disc, which has the last episode. So, yeah. I uh, got this from it was like a, cha a charity thing. There was like the price. I don't know if it's going out of print, but the price of this on like Amazon and stuff's gone up. And uh, there was like an eBay. I found it on eBay quite cheap, and it was for a, uh, from a charity shop that was selling it. So I thought, well, you know, getting it for a good price and it's for a good cause. So yeah, because uh, definitely worth watching if you like. Uh, if you're interested in. Uh, science and stuff. This is like says one of the the greatest scientific series of all time. So you know, despite it being outdated, it is still very good. Although the special effects they use are very cheesy now. Uh, next, we have another TV series. I got this in the uh, Prime Day Amazon sale for very. I can't remember how much it was, but it was a good price for it. We have uh, this was one of my favorite TV programs when I was younger. Uh, the Monsters, the complete. The Close Classic Collection, which is the complete series. So both series one, seasons one and two. Um, this is it's a TV show from the 60s about like a, a family made up of uh, horror movie monsters. It's like the dads are Frankenstein, the wife and the grandpa are vampires and the kids are werewolf. And then you've got um, Marilyn, I think her name is, who's like normal looking. And they're all saying, oh, you know... <laughs> It's a shame Marilyn's such a, you know, uh, so freaky looking. It's, it's you know, it's pretty funny. I used to watch repeats of this on, uh, I think, BBC Two when I was a kid. And, yeah, I always really found it funny. So, yeah. Glad. I could, looking forward to re-watching this again. Uh, doesn't mention it. There are special features. It doesn't mention any, but, like, I think it's got, like, documentaries and stuff on the last disc. So I don't know why they're not mentioned on the box. But, uh, yeah. Comes in one of these... Um, some people hate these. It's like sort of a oversized Amory with a tray that you can take out. I like them. They take up less space, and because the tray is, you know, you can take them out, it doesn't make it awkward to, like, you know, if they were, like, here. Might make them a bit awkward to, like, you know, 
get the discs, but because you can just take them out, it's easier. So, mention. Oh yeah, bonus disc. You get uh, m- monstrous bonus scenes. America's uh, first family of fright. Fred Gwynn documentary on Fred Gwynn and Yvonne DiCarlo and Al Lewis, who played uh, Herman, Lily, and uh, Grandpa. And uh, I believe on the f- yeah, in the first season, you get a, a bonus. You get the original unaired pilot episode, so you do get some extra features. I don't know why they mention don't mention them on the back, but you. Are listed in here. So yeah, uh, if you like the Adams Family, this is pretty similar. So if you like the Adams Family TV show movies, I would I recommend giving this a go too because you know, it's it is quite similar. I, I do like this more personally, but you know they're both they're both good. Uh, next we have a uh, a classic film, uh, Streetcar Named Desire, with Marlon Brando and Vivian Lee. Uh yeah I bought I have actually seen I hadn't I uh hadn't watched it when I bought it but I've watched it since and it is it is very good it does you know deserve its uh, reputation as a classic uh so it comes with this slip cover uh, so uh special features commentary by Carl Mo- Molden and film historians Rudy Belmer and Jeff Young Elia Kazan movie trailer gallery. Uh, this is the one disc. Yeah, it says on here one disc edition. There was a two disc edition, but I just bought it. Bought it because it was cheap, really. And uh, yeah, so and there's the inside cover with the original poster on the back. It's got different pictures, but it's the same thing. And uh, yeah, definitely a great, great film. If you like Marlon Brando, this is one of his best uh, performances. This and uh, the the first Godfather and uh, On the Waterfront are probably my favourites of his. So yeah, definitely give it a go. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Uh, I haven't seen this one yet, it's, uh, but I like Richard Burton, and uh, yeah, this is you know, uh, and uh, he starred in this with Elizabeth Taylor, and this is it's apparently it's again it's another. I think it did this win Best Picture or was it nominated? I can't I can't remember. Um, it won a total of five Academy Awards. Uh, it doesn't say which ones. <laughs> So uh, I don't know, if, but yeah, it's a good film. Audio commentary by uh, Mike Nichols, the director, and Steven Soderbergh, and then another commentary by the cinematographer. So yeah, uh, I think this is another one where there was a two disc DVD, but this is just the one disc. But never mind. Um, it's basically I don't think it's about Virginia Woolf. Is it about her? I I, I don't know much about. It. I know it's a, meant to be a good film, but I don't think it's actually about her. I'm not sure why it's called Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but. Uh, yeah, I think they play a married couple. It's it's a bit like married with children, where they're a married couple, and then there's another married couple who, like, you know, they meet and uh, are much happier than they are. So they try and uh, you know make the the other married couple uh, feel miserable or something. Uh, yeah. So, looking forward to watching that. Next, we have I got this in a charity shop for twenty five p. We have uh, the Time Machine. This is the sixties version by uh, George Powell. Um, yeah, again, this is something that is on Blu-ray, but 25p, can't, (laughs) I'll take the less, the lesser quality for, you know, it's that cheap, uh, yeah, really good film, special effects look a bit dated now, but it is, you know, an enjoyable film, much better than that awful remake with uh, Guy Pearce, and, uh, yeah, I've got the copy of the book, but, uh, which I haven't read yet, uh, the Hitchy Wells story. I've got like a, a big uh, hardback book with uh, like about seven of his uh, no- of his novels in. So I really should read that one of these days. But this is a very good uh, film adaptation uh, with uh, what's his face uh, Rod Taylor as the uh, as the time traveler, and also uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, there's another actor in this, Alan Young who was the voice of Scrooge McDuck, is also in this. So, yeah, so, so special features, there's a behind-the-scenes documentary, a scene access, interactive menus, and trailer. I remember in the old days when uh, scene selection was advertised as a special feature, well, considering at least two DV- of these DVDs that I've bought don't have a scene selection, I guess it was a special feature back in the, <laughs> in the day, so, yeah. 
time machine, one of those really old Warner Brothers discs where no, not really much, just says the film and the ratings and stuff. So yeah, uh, looking forward to rewatching that. Next we have a TV series. I used to have the individual, they released them all on DVD and then like about 10 years later they did a remastered edition with like a box set with the remastered episodes in. I had the old DVDs individually, but uh, I sold them because I, th- I wanted to get the box set, one for the remastered episodes, and two to save space. Uh, so we have uh, Black Adder, the remastered, the ultimate edition, which has every episode of Black Adder. This is the this particular version is the BBC classic comedy edition, which it's the same as the regular box set, but it's in this cover, and these particular covers were exclusive too. HMV, but for some reason Amazon was selling this as well, as well as the regular box set, and I just got this because it was uh, it's in a it's in a standard case, and it so it takes up less room than the packaging on the uh, the regular box set. So, yeah, it was only a quid more anyway, so I thought well, it's worth paying the extra one pound for to save space because shelf space is important uh, <laughs> when you start collecting physical media. So it's got a picture of. Uh, Basically, if you don't know what Blackadder is, it's about it's a historic it's a, it's a hit sitcom set in like historical time period. It's about sort of the uh, the Blackadder. It basically um, different uh, people in the Blackadder lineage, like Rowan Atkinson plays um, it, the first series is like medieval England, and then in each subsequent series he plays a descendant of that character. So that's the Elizabeth. That's Blackadder two. The Elizabethan series set in Elizabethan times. So you've got the Blackadder, which is um, the first series, which is set in medieval times. Blackadder two, which is the is Elizabethan. Blackadder three is uh, or Blackadder the third. I'm not sure. It's Blackadder the third. I think is um, Georgian times. A Blackadder goes forth. It's the First World War, and you also have. Um, Uh, Blackadder's Christmas Carol, Blackadder the Caval, which is like a parody of Christmas Carol, Blackadder the Cavalier Years, and Blackadder Back and Forth, which was like a reunion episode they did, like about ten years after the show ended, and uh, it's got a lot of special features too. So my old individual series DVDs didn't have any bonus features, so again makes it more of an upgrade. So that disc one, the Blackadder, disc two, Blackadder two. Blackadder, the third, uh, Blackadder goes fourth, uh, the disc with the um, special episodes, and then the bonus features. So, bonus features wise, we have uh, it's got um, audio commentaries with Ron Atkinson and John Lloyd, Stephen Fry, Ben Elton, and Richard Curtis, Tony Robertson, and Tim McNeary. So, a lot of the cast members there. Blackadder Rides Again, which is a documentary that was done for the 25th anniversary. I, I've seen that documentary on like, sort of on TV, I think, uh, when they aired it. And then you have uh, exclusive extended interviews taken from the documentary. Uh, costumes Revisited, which is like some of the actors looking at their costumes they had. And uh, again, the um, special episodes. And then Baldrick's Video Diary, which was the making of Back and Forth. So... Yeah, if you're a fan of the show, this is definitely the bo- the version to get. Um, they probably will release a Blu-ray of this because uh, they did Faulty Towers, uh, I think, last year or earlier this year. So they'll probably do a Blu-ray of this as well. But um, uh, honestly, uh, a lot of the BBC like Blu-ray really, where they've like done Blu-rays of shows that were start on standard def videos. Some of, they're very hit and miss. Some of them look are, are good. Some of them have some issues like uh, I think the Red Dwarf one they had to um, do some replacement discs because a couple of the discs had uh, problems with them and some of the Doctor Who ones are the so so um, uh, I'll probably just I'll probably just stick with the DVD it's DVD anyway because you know <laughs> they might uh, cock up the blu-ray when it gets released so yeah just just stick with the DVD for now I would say and lastly, we have uh, last thing. Uh, this just arrived this morning in the post. Well, from Amazon uh, delivery, we have uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo trilogy, 
the extended versions. It's got the girl with dragon tattoo, the girl with blade of fire, and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. These are the original Swedish film versions. Um, I've seen the first, the theatrical cut of the first one, but I've not seen the other two. And I've heard the extended versions are much better. So, yeah, glad I got this. It was actually only six pound on Amazon. So, and uh, I have prime prime delivery, so it was uh, so didn't have to pay postage. So, hooray, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so looking forward to watching, rewatching the first one, because I remember really liking it. I do have the David Fincher remake, uh, as well. I got that in Panland, actually, so another bargain. And I've not seen the, what was it, they did, a, they did the fourth book recently in uh, The Girl Who, The Girl in the Spides Web or something, I haven't seen that. It was meant to be not very good, so you get, um, Digipack. Not a big fan of Digipacks, actually, because, uh, they tend to get damaged, you know, over time they tend to wear, get worn over time. But uh, so we got the girl played with fire, the girl the, kicked the hornet's nest, the girl with the drunk tattoo, and then I guess that's just a picture of all three of them. So so you get the girl with the dragon tattoo, uh, girl played with fire, girl kicked the hornet's nest, and then the bonus DVD. Shame they didn't put the bonus features on a Blu-ray as well, but I guess uh, it's not that too much of a problem, you know. At least it has bonus features. Uh, so, there we go. Yeah. So, that's uh, that's all the stuff I got uh, recently. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll do another one of these when I've bought some more stuff. Probably be after Christmas, because I'm trying to save money to get, like, um, people like my mum and my sister stuff. So, yeah, probably be after Christmas. Uh, I'll do another one of these. So... Yeah, until then, uh, uh, so long for now.